In this video, we're going to explore Virginia Tech Regional Math Competition 2019 number 7. So this is an undergraduate mathematics problem that has to do with asking whether or not a particular series converges. And I think it's a great problem with playing around with the ideas of convergence and how you can establish whether a series converges or not. So stay tuned for an interesting problem with, with an interesting follow-up as well. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. This channel is dedicated to undergraduate theorems and problems for your road through the undergraduate and to prepare you for the road beyond. If you're new to this channel and this resonates with you, definitely click the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications on future videos. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. So today we're going to discuss this interesting problem and it goes like this. We'll let S denote the set of positive integers that have no zero in their decimal expansion. So an example of a number like that is 3918, and an example of a number that's not in this list is a number like 9011 or 9002. Okay, so the question is, does the series where we sum over all, not all natural numbers, but all natural numbers in S, so numbers like this, of the ratio one over n to the 99 over 100, converge. Okay, before diving into this problem, I want to explain sort of why I think this is kind of an interesting phenomenon. If you look at the sum over n in the natural numbers, this is a symbol usually used for natural numbers, so all the counting numbers from 1 onward, of 1 over n to the p, one thing that you learn in a calculus course is that this series converges for p strictly greater than 1 and it diverges when p is between 0 and 1. Okay, so what's happening here is you're not summing over all natural numbers, but you're getting rid of just a few of them. The ones that don't ha that have a 0 in their decimal expansion, you get rid of those and you keep all the rest. Okay, um, then you're changing this exponent ever so slightly from 1. It's just less than that. If you summed over all natural numbers, that would diverge. But now the question is, if you get rid of all these ones with zeros, does the subsequent thing actually converge or not? This, so there's these two phenomena that are like sort of counteracting each other. One is the sum that you're summing over, right? Summing over fewer things. But then here you have this uh, power of n, which governs convergence in this case, but we're not sure of whether it governs convergence in this case. So let's go ahead and dive into the problem. Okay, so one thing that we can try to do is do sort of a dual game. We can either try to bound this above by something and hope that that thing we bounded it above by converges, and then by the comparison test, this series will converge. Or we can bound this below by something that diverges, and then by the comparison test, this thing will diverge. Okay, so one thing we could do is block the actual numbers we're dealing with in this set into chunks to make estimates on this number right over here. So one natural way to chunk is to look at all k digit numbers. So like one digit numbers, or two digit, two digit numbers, three digit numbers, etc. in S. Uh, okay, so first of all, how many of them are there? The number of k digit numbers in S. So we have k things to fill here and each of the digits has to be between 1 and 9 because we're not allowed to have a 0. So there's 9 choices for this, 9 choices for this, etc. 9 choices for each digit independent of each other. So the total number of digits in this clump is 9 to the k. So I'll write 9 to the k of these. Okay, now if we look at the part of this sum that involves these, we can get upper bounds and lower bounds for this particular um, expression here. So I'm going to start by trying to maybe prove this converges. Again, we don't know. So we want an upper bound for this or among these numbers. Now the k-digit numbers go from a number like this where you have k minus 1 zeros, so meaning starting from 10 to the k minus 1, 
and you go all the way to one fewer than 10 to the k. Okay, so if we look at the numbers in this range and look at this function, we're taking one over n to a power. So the denominator gets bigger and bigger as we go along, which means one over the denominator gets smaller and smaller as we go along. So the maximum possible value of this quantity right over here is achieved at the smallest number in this range when we look at this quantity restricted to the k digit numbers in our set s. Okay, so if we look at the sum of this restricted to the k digit numbers in our set s, all of the values are going to be at most 1 over 10 to the k minus 1 raised to this exponent. Again, because for all the numbers in this range, this entry right over here that we plug in for n will be larger as we go along. So this is the maximum it can possibly take in this range. So this bounds above this thing for everything in s that has k digits. And the number of things in s is 9 to the k. So this sum is going to be bounded above by this expression right over here, 9 to the k over 10 to the k minus 1 raised to the 99 over 100. At least this part of it, the sum will be bounded above by this. When we look at the restriction of this sum, to the k-digit numbers. Now we have numbers that have one digit or two digit or three digits, etc. So summing over all possible number of digits, the upper bound is the sum from k equals one to infinity of this quantity right over here. So what remains, if it happens to be the case that the sum converges, is to explore whether or not this actually converges itself. Now, it might not, I have no idea, but if it doesn't, what we can do is play the same game where instead we replace this with the lower bound, which would be uh, 1 over this, this uh, expression is evaluated at this number right over here, get the lower bound and try to do a similar game if possible. Okay, so let's take a look at what this actual expression looks like. We notice we have powers of different numbers. So let's play around with this particular expression because it looks almost like we have a power of a fixed number times a constant. So if we look at this, we have 9 to the k over, we can express this denominator as 10 to the k to the 99 over 100 times 10 to the negative 1 to this, so that's 10 to the negative 99 over 100. And now, because of that, we can put all of this into one term as, I'll take this constant out, you have 1 over 10 to the negative 99 over 100, and then we're multiplying by 9 over 10 to the 99 over 100, all raised to the k. I switch the exponents here, because exponents multiply. And so that's the expression that we actually have right over here in the sum. Okay, so we have a constant times powers of a particular fixed number. So this is actually a geometric series. And so this thing will converge. This is a non-negative number. This thing will converge only when this thing is strictly less than 1. So in order to test whether or not this converges, we need to figure out if this number here is less than 1. Let's so actually write that number down. So that number is 9 over 10 to the 99 over 100. And we want to know whether or not that is less than 1. Okay. And again, if we can figure this out, this converges. If not, we don't know, and we'll go to the... Um, testing divergence by getting a lower bound on this and doing something. Okay, let's rearrange this inequality if, uh, 
to clear it out. So we can multiply by this and it'll be equivalent. So that'll be proving that 9 is less than 10 to the 99 over 100. Or similarly, 9 to the 100 is less than 10 to the 99. So this is a weird inequality to try to prove. It doesn't seem like we necessarily have clear techniques to do this. It's not like we have a calculator on this uh, contest where we can do things like evaluate these. These numbers look huge anyway, but we could take the logarithm of each of them and then compute those. But I'm going to show a method for actually comparing in situations like this that is quite convenient and pretty neat. So the question we're remaining with is whether or not this quantity is less than this quantity. And if that's true, then this series converges. And so our series originally converges. Okay, so one thing you can do is actually think about this number on the right as one or nine plus one to the 99. And the reason is now you can think about expanding this as a product of different binomials. If you do that, the first term will be, think about this value here as an x, right? You'll have x to the 99, so 9 to the 99. And then the next term will be an x to the 98 term. And the question is, what is this coefficient? Well, you'll have 99 binomials. And any time that you get a 9 to the 98, you will have selected one from one of those 99 binomials and a 9 from the rest. There's 99 possible binomials you could have selected the one from. So the coefficient here is going to be actually 99. It's actually true in general. Um, if we had this x over here, here we'd have x to the 99. And here we'd have 99 times x to the 98. Okay. Why is that convenient for us, and why would we think to do that in the first place? Well, first of all, we're trying to compare this with this, and we can exp so it's natural to think of expressing 10 in terms of 9, and here's a way to do it. And secondly, these are like major contributors to this expression because they involve powers of 9 that are large, and as we keep going down and expanding this, the powers of 9 get smaller. Okay, so if we take a look at this expression then, we have, uh, we can actually add these two. This quantity here is 9 times 9 to the 98. So this sum is actually 9 plus 99 times 9 to the 98. And we're trying to establish, hopefully, that this thing is strictly greater than 9 to the 100. Okay, but if you look at this, this quantity is bigger than 81. So this is actually bigger than 9 squared times 9 to the 8, 98. And that is 9 to the 100. So we do have this inequality right over here. Kind of a neat idea. When you have two consecutive numbers raised to large powers, you can sort of estimate using binomial expansions. Okay, great. So that means that this thing indeed does converge. And so this sum right over here converges as well. A pretty cool problem that requires a little bit of estimation and sort of playing around with things and being careful. And then at the end, this sort of surprising interpretation of a particular inequality um, in order to establish the convergence of the thing you're bounding your original series by. Now here's the thing with mathematics. Like it seems at this point, especially if you're someone who has an interest in contests, that this is a stopping point that you figured out the problem and you're happy to go. But in mathematics, really what we want to do is understand the behavior and nature of things. So here we have a situation in which this particular sum does converge. And a natural question from a mathematician's point of view is how much can we actually push this further? So if you increase this exponent, like we add some value to it, let's say c, then the sum over all n in s of this quantity is going to converge as well, because these denominators are even larger than the ones that we had before. Okay, but what if we make this smaller? We know that 
for n and s, if we take the sum with the exponent being 99 over 100, then we do converge. But can we make this even smaller and still have convergence? What's the smallest we can make this exponent and still have convergence when restricting our sum to the values in s? This is a question that I think is very natural to the type of thing that occurs when you're doing mathematical research. You're sort of playing with one idea and you want to push it and see how far you can go with the particular objects at hand. So that's a problem I'm going to leave for you to explore. And if you have any thoughts on it, definitely leave your observations, ideas, even if they're sort of not clearly thought of, or even if it's just sort of observations that you make, that's sort of the whole fun of exploring with mathematics. Definitely leave comments about whatever you do discover. Great, so thanks so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications for future videos.